Hi, I'm Rebecca Olson, Communications Manager at the Pacific Institute, and I'm speaking today with Dr. Laura Feinstein, Senior Researcher at the Pacific Institute. Laura, California passed the Human Right to Water in 2012. Where are we today? The Human Right to Water was an important aspirational goal to encode into law in California. It changed people's perspective on delivering water and sanitation in the state from, I think, a focus on how much we had already achieved and the fact that most people have safe water and sanitation to really reorienting the public conversation around the failures that still persist. Tell me about the framework for measuring access to water and sanitation you proposed in your recent report. Our goal with our framework that we proposed in measuring progress was to think in a really um, specific measurable way how we could define uh, access to safe, affordable water and sanitation in California. You hear these terms thrown around a lot in public discourse um, that so-and-so doesn't have safe water or this water isn't affordable or that sanitation isn't accessible. But people aren't often defining their terms very specifically and different people use them in different ways. So we felt that the first step to actually being able to track these problems and start to agree on our priorities and who is and isn't impacted is to get some really specific definitions and goals set down. You recently co-authored a fact sheet on water shutoffs in California. Why is this a problem and what can be done? If people don't pay their water utility bill for more than a certain period of time, their water can be disconnected and then they have to live in a house without running water. Obviously, that's an important problem for people's health and their basic ability to just function and lead their lives productively. Um, this has always been a problem that people have talked about much more in the energy sector where bills tend to be higher, but it's becoming more of an more of an issue in water because the cost of water is going up and it's gonna become an increasing problem over time. Um, there's some important ways that we could be uh, addressing these issues more creatively in California, um, specifically with thinking about um, a lot of due process protections around disconnections, collecting some better information to be able to differentiate households that fail to pay their bill simply because they move versus households that can't pay their bill because of an affordability problem. And then offering um, some more constructive strategies for helping people afford their water on a month to month basis. Why is it important to include sanitation access when talking about water access issues in California? Well, the United Nations um, passed a resolution recognizing the human right to water and sanitation. The two were meant to be co-equal partners, and the reason for that is because your goals in delivering safe drinking water can't be met if people don't have access to sanitation. So the same types of diseases and public health problems that people experience when their drinking water is unsafe are what they experience when their sanitation is inadequate. So in order to solve one problem, you need to be thinking about them both jointly. Can you give us a preview of the current project you're working on looking at sanitation access issues across the state? So we have a report that's about to come out looking at lack of access to plumbing and sanitation in California. And for that, we really looked at two major populations. We were both interested in um, households that don't have adequate plumbing in their homes. So these are typically households that are in areas that are served by a wastewater system, but their plumbing is inadequate to actually hook up to it for some reason. Um, because, for example, they simply lack a, a private indoor toilet, which can happen sometimes in substandard housing, places like RVs um, or, or garages when people are living in makeshift homes. And also when people live in certain types of shared homes, um, they're known as single resident occupancies, where people have um, a room, but they don't have their own bathroom. And that can actually lead to a lot of problems when they have to deal with shared facilities where they're not often, they're, they're not always safe and accessible to use. Mm -hmm. And then we were also interested in looking at the homeless population because people who are experiencing homelessness typically, not only do they not have a place to sleep, but they also don't have a bathroom to use. Mm -hmm. So we were interested um, both in the homeless population that's living on the street all day long, as well as those who are in shelters in the evening, but they lose access to the shelters during the day, which means they also lose access to 
bathrooms and to running water for washing their hands. Right. And that has led in California recently to a lot of problems, including one of the worst hepatitis A outbreaks we've seen in years, which started among populations that were living on the streets and didn't have toilet facilities or places to wash their hands. Right. What are the next big steps to implement the human right to water in California? There's a lot of big steps on the table right now in California. People are thinking ambitiously. Um, one of the biggest issues that people are trying to resolve right now is how to develop a long-term sustainable funding source for small community water systems that don't have the financial capacity to deliver safe drinking water. Um, another big objective with increasing access to water and sanitation right now is thinking about the affordability end of the spectrum and thinking about um, how we can get past some of the old legal barriers on delivering um, uh, bill discounts to low-income families um, to ensure that, uh, that every family can afford their bill on a monthly basis. And then on the sanitation end of things, um, we're still more trying to get a handle on the scope of the problem of people with inadequate sanitation. But I would say that there's some promising signs of people really starting to take an interest in thinking about how to make sure that uh, persons experiencing homelessness have access to facilities for using the toilet and washing their hands. Great, thank you.